All right, and welcome back. It's the thaw. It's around 50 degrees now on February, was it 20th? I don't even remember what day it is, 23rd or so. Getting to be late February, almost March. So I wanted to do a little video about the Nikon Z system as a whole for what I, you know, what I feel about it after using it for since late 2018 with the Z7 and then the Z50 and then the Z5, which I'm recording this on the Z7 with a 35 millimeter um, Z mount lens. That's the 1.8. And I wanted to um, talk about that. So the lens, the 35 millimeter, along with the, the camera itself. So excuse me while I set my phone down somewhere so I can still kind of keep an eye on it, but um, not have it fall off in the, the creek here, which is usually just barely running, but there's a lot of snow melt right now. All right, I think that's good enough. So let me just talk about the 35 millimeter first. And I don't have them recording with the 35, so I can't show you, but trust me, it's almost exactly like the, the 85. So I'll, as I open up this bag, I'll get that out. What do we have here? That's the 24 to 70. So this is the 85 right here. The 85 1.8. The only thing different about the 35, it's pretty much constructed the exact same way, uh, but it just has a... Um, it's a little bit smaller. That's really it. It's got a manual focus and autofocus switch on the side, but you know construction is exactly the same. So you're not missing anything by not seeing it. Uh, just know that it's like the 85, a little bit smaller, not too much smaller. Uh, but the 35, it is a just like the 85, a really, really good high quality lens. It does have a little vignetting at the wide apertures. You know, it's nothing that I can't fix in Adobe Lightroom, which um, normally. You know, that kind of takes care of itself anyway. And I tend to add a little vignette in my pictures anyway. So, not a big deal. Just watching a log float down the stream here. I'm easily distracted, as you can tell. So, the 35, 85, and the 50, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's all, they're all kind of the same construction. Just, a, you know, very high quality optically. A little bit of vignetting on the wide end, the uh, wide apertures. Um, super sharp. Um, a tiny bit of chromatic aberration, but again, it's something like super easy to fix in Lightroom. You just get the little dropper and put it on there, one click, and you're done. So, for me, and you know, the price, the 85 was a little no, I said 35. It was a little higher price than I really wanted to pay, uh, and I wouldn't have paid any higher than that. I think I got it when it was like $150 off on sale, uh, but it's it's pretty expensive if you don't buy it on sale. So that's the only thing I could say about it as far as anything negative. And um, of course it would be nice to be a little bit smaller size, but again, as long as it's really high quality optically, you know, it's fine, it's not a big deal. Um, I think everybody's expecting a, a pancake lens, you know, that's like a 1.2 aperture. Um, I don't know, I, people's realist, real, um, expectations are a little unrealistic sometimes, but it could be a little bit smaller, but it, then it could be a little bit worse optically. So I'm fine with the way it is. There's really not much to say about it. There's uh, tons of reviews out there on the 35, the 85, and the 50 1.8 lenses, the Z-mount lenses from Nikon. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. And I do have a gallery. I'll put all these in the uh, description down in, in the video down below. And uh, so you'll have that. So there's, I've got the, the gallery for the 85 and also the 35. And what I use them for normally, I, I tend to not use single focal length lenses, prime lenses. Um, I kind of use them just for fooling around, specialty stuff. You know, I don't usually use them for portraits very much. Uh, use them for landscape, um, just miscellaneous things. I might use the 35 at a place where I've been a lot of times and not worried about missing something. If I'm worried about missing something, I'll take like a zoom lens, like a 24 to, uh, 24 to 200 or the 24 to 70. So I'll just leave it at that for the 35 and uh, check the gallery if you're interested in seeing that. And by the way, I realized my waterproof boots not really so much waterproof anymore after all the snow and ice out here this year. I kind of beat them to death. So I'll be in the market for some new waterproof boots. All right, so anyway, the, the Nikon Z system started out in late October with the Z7, which is recording this, again, with the 35 millimeter. I think I've got it set to, actually, it's on programmed auto, so whatever aperture is picking up, like F8 or somewhere. I don't really know for sure right now. Actually, I could probably tell you. Looks like it is on F, F8. And um, so 
So the Z7, you know, I was just absolutely thrilled with, you know, the camera itself, how it felt. Um, you know, the image quality is outstanding. And everybody says it's got the same sensors as the Nikon D850, D850 um, but it's just got, you know, the phase detect autofocus points now on the sensor. So you've got a combination of phase detect and contrast detect autofocus. And to me, and I'm, I'm gonna still stick with this, and I haven't used every camera out there, obviously, but I've used the Sony a7R III, uh, the Sony a6400, the a6100, which I own now, the 6100, um, the uh, Panasonic G9, GH5, uh, I've used in the past the Olympic cam Olympus cameras like the EM1, EM5, you know, things like that. And um, so I've used a pretty wide variety of cameras, and I'm telling you, the, this, the Nikon Z system, you know, the Z7, holy cow, there's a, uh, what is that? It's like a muskrat or something. He just come bounding up the side of the stream here and saw me. He's like, oh, <laughs> he turned around and left. But I think it's a muskrat. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well, now I'm really distracted because I'm <laughs> going to wait for him to come back. So that was pretty neat. He was just like right along the edge of the stream here. And normally this is just like barely moving. You can see the rocks and everything. Uh, but all the snow melt, it's really kind of coming down. Um, probably going to be some flooding down by the Ohio River and all that too because of the, all this water dumping into the Ohio River and the Licking River. Um, but anyway, back to the cameras. So I think this system is still the best focusing system I've ever used, the most accurately focusing system. I'm, I'm talking about single point autofocus and AFS, you know, like not continuous shooting, not continuous autofocus and not autofocus tracking. I'm talking about single point, um, which is using the phase detect autofocus and um, single point focuses on one item and it's done. And that it's just about every single time, I swear it's in focus and it's really sharp focus. Um, I've had cameras that really frustrating, like the Fuji X-T4, that's another one I've owned recently and sent it back because uh, for one thing, I had the 16 to 80 lens with it. Uh, I can't remember if I had the 18 to 55 with it also. But that camera, I know it's widely praised and, and I liked it and wanted to love it, but I sent it back you know, during the return period and replaced it with a Z5. And um, I couldn't be happier with a Z5, which is this one right here with the 24 to 200 kit lens. That's another thing I wanted the kit lens, 24 to 200, um, but I couldn't find it at that time on its own. So it was lucky for me that I wanted to get another body anyway. So now I have two Z mount bodies and the 24 to 200. Um, so I got them together. So that's kind of a package deal and save just a little bit of money, not too much. Um, but even the X-T4, you know, it missed a lot of focus on me and uh, it was just kind of disappointing. And I had a battery problem with it, you know, power problem where I just turned the camera on and it wouldn't power on, had to take the battery out and put it back in. And uh, there might've been a firmware release later on that fixed that, but I don't know. But I just wanted to return it while I could. So, but the Z system is just, every time I pick up a different camera and then come back to my Z5 or Z7, it just feels so good. The menus are laid out really well. Everything is easy to find. I've heard people say that Nikon menus were a little confusing, which is confusing to me because I'm thinking, <laughs> this is one of the best uh, menu systems I've used. Um, Sony was notorious for the really bad menu systems like the A7R III. Um, still in the A6100, it's got those old menu menus that are kind of hard to navigate and find things. So as long as you get your menu, personal menu set up the way you want, then you kind of get to everything in that function menu too. It's like a personalized menu on the back of the screen. Um, makes it a lot easier. But, I mean, everything about the Z system, it's just, the image quality is outstanding, the ergonomics is outstanding, the build quality is outstanding, um, the focus is outstanding, with the exception of if you want really excellent continuous autofocus tracking. Obviously, Sony is well known for that. Um, Canon's, you know, up their game really good on that with like the R5, is an excellent camera. Uh, and if I didn't already have a Z system, I might actually be looking at the Canon R5 because it looks like they finally have a really nice image sensor in there that's got um, dynamic range to compete with these other cameras. Um, so, yeah, just, just everything about it all, everything's laid out where I want, you know, the on-off switch, the shutter button, uh, the video record button, right here at your fingertips, you know, ISO, ISO, and uh, exposure compensation, but I usually use the rear dial for exposure compensation and the front dial, because um, I'm an aperture priority usually, and the front dial to change the aperture. And I have the exposure compensation set to reset when I turn the camera off. So it's not like a physical aperture um, or exposure compensation button, which I don't necessarily like because I think it's better for me to have it on this customizable button 
uh, or dial because when I change the exposure compensation and then turn the camera off, it resets back to zero, no, no compensation. And uh, so that's one of the reasons I don't like to have the fixed exposure compensation dial because then when you change it, usually the way it's set up on other cameras, it's stuck there. You just have to remember that you changed it and you need to look at the camera and change it back. So there's that. The, you know, the, the switch in the back between video and audio, or I mean video and photos. Um, I don't know how well you can see this, but obviously you can look at my gallery and see where all these things are on the camera really close up. The AF on button for, you know, activating autofocus without uh, locking the exposure. That's really well placed. You know, the, the little D-pad in the back, the little four-way controller with a button in the middle. You know, I use that to reset the, the autofocus points. Um, of course, with, it's got the focus joystick or whatever you want to call it on the back. Um, and the playback, mu playback button and the delete button and just all the buttons, everything that I would commonly use is right there at my fingertips. And the grip feels great. You know, on a cold day, you know, I've got a nice rubbery grip that's not really cold on my hands. So I'm going to keep track of the time here and not fall in the creek. 18, I, wanted, I have 18 minutes, I hope I won't take that long. Um, it's, since it's melting, it's really kind of slushy and uh, slippery here. So I might be in the creek before this is done. And I'm still looking out for that muskrat, see if he's going to come back. Um, that is pretty cool though. I didn't know they were around here. I guess they, you know, they were. It's one of those things, little critters that you just don't normally see a lot, like deer and so on. There's deer all the time in my yard, um, snacking on my shrubs and my perennials and so on. Come spring, they'll be looking out for my tulips. You know they will, because they love those tulip flowers. So anyway, in the uh, the growth itself, you know, the leaves on the tulips. Um, on the Z7, you know, it has the um, the mode dial on the other side because there's a there's a screen on the top, which I love on the Z7, and it's real easy to see in the daytime. I use that all the time. Um, but just everything about it, you know, it's just laid out really well. It would be maybe a little bit convenient to have the flip-out screen where you could turn it around and see yourself if you're doing a selfie like this, instead of having to use my phone to see. But I'd probably still be controlling it with my phone anyway, because um, I don't normally edit these videos just straight out of the camera, and I just upload it in one single clip as is. That's usually what all my videos are. Um, so in that case, you know, I wouldn't want to be walking around the back of the camera and turning it off, but it doesn't matter, you know, for what I'm doing, because you saw me put my phone on the ground. It's totally unprofessional uh, video shoot here, but I'm not here to be a professional. I'm just here to, you know, give out information that I think might be useful for people to just enjoy photography like myself. And uh, hopefully, I'll look around. I'm just hoping there's nobody shows up behind me uh, out here in the middle of the the woods near the creek. Now, just so you know, over this way, just, just across the stream, there's a, a big piece of land there. Right now it's just grass and small trees and everything. They excavated it all up, you know, a couple years ago. Well, actually several years ago, about like 2008. And then when the housing market, you know, went bust, they kind of stopped work on it. But ultimately that's going to end up being a subdivision. So kind of a bummer, you know, because I like to come down here and, um, take pictures around here in the autumn, you know, the leaves and so on. But um, hopefully they'll build something nice if they're gonna build something in it. And uh, I don't know. I'd rather it just stay trees and leaves <laughs> myself, but because it's more peaceful. But uh, anyway, back to the camera. The batteries, the batteries are really common, ENL, ENEL15. And on the Z5, you know, it's got the newer one, the ENEL15C, which you can charge through USB. But it's a really common battery. It's been around for a long time with Nikon, so you could, you know, these are really pretty cheap and easy to find everywhere. A lot of third-party batteries, a lot of third-party chargers, and uh, the nice thing is also Nikon doesn't skimp out and give you, uh, you know, cheap out and give you no battery charger with the camera. So when I bought the Z5, it came with a battery charger. You can charge it through USB, but like that A6100 Sony I bought, um, you can't charge it. Well, it, you can charge it USB, but that, that's your only choice unless you buy the battery charger. Fortunately, I have one of those Watson Duo chargers and um, it has different plates on it. You can just replace the different battery plates to uh, support different batteries. And I mentioned this several times in other videos, but that's a really nice product. You can just buy, it's, the plates are literally, literally like $2 or less. And um, so you can buy the plates for the EN, EL15 batteries and just put two of those on there and charge two of those batteries. Uh, or you can put one for the 
that little Sony battery that uh, has been around for a long time, um, and I think those that new Z battery, whatever it is, the newer, higher capacity battery that Sony has. Uh, but uh, see, I'm telling you, I'm going to be in that creek for too long. Um, yeah, but you know, just doing this as a hobby, um, the Z5 and Z7, they really work well for me. And since I don't shoot really fast action sports or anything that really moves around really quickly, and I, and I don't really use autofocus tracking, except on the, a, the Sony A6100 I do, and I'll explain that in just a second. But um, yeah, normally just since it's so easy to move focus point around on these cameras, um, you know, I, I usually just use the single point and that's all I need. I mean, I might occasionally turn on autofocus continuous, you know, AF, AFC, um, and still use a single point. Like if I've got a subject that's moving around and I want to put the focus point on it and just kind of keep the focus going um, because they're moving back and forth and I just want to make sure I get it um, sharp, you know, so that they didn't move you know, the shutter speed too slow and they moved and now I've got some motion blur. But um, yeah, as far as that A6100 Sony and um, all the newer cameras that Sony has, that real-time autofocus tracking has a really great system um, and it's one that I can actually rely on. Uh, I don't normally like to rely on autofocus tracking on any camera I've had in the past. Uh, but those, that A6400 I had in the past, and uh, it's a weird story how I got from the A6400 to the 6100, but there's another video about that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something I do actually use, and you can focus um, on something and just let it go. Just let, let that track the subject, um, and, and it's almost always in focus. Um, there might be some cases where I have a, a really small subject, and... Um, you know, something in nature and, you know, it's like a specific leaf or whatever that I want to focus on and not something like right next to it because the depth of field won't be enough to, to make it sharp for what I want. Um, that might be the case where with the Sony camera I would use the single point um, AFS instead of uh, AFC and the focus tracking. But yeah, otherwise, let me see what, what we have going on here for the time. Looks like I've almost done 20 minutes. But I'll tell you what. I'm really happy with these cameras, and I'm really happy to take them on vacation. They're not really big. Um, they're, you know, I think the appropriate size for the lens quality and uh, the body size that you need for it to be comfortable. Um, and the 24 to 200 is just a, an outstanding lens optically. It's got a little vignetting, you know, like some of the other lenses, but again, not too bad at all. And it's just um, image image stabilization. Since both of these, uh, the Z5 and the um, well, the 24 to 200 I think has uh, optical image stabilization, but the uh, Z5 has the uh, in-body image stabilization anyway in the Z7. Um, but it, you know, it's that's the other thing about the Z5 and Z7 that really good uh, in-body image stabilization. Um, and I, you know, I I generally don't go lower than a fifteenth of a second if I can, like in a museum or something. Um, and obviously it depends on if your subject's moving, you can't go one fifteenth of a second because then you've got motion blur. Uh, but really good image stabilization. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, it's one of those camera systems you know, that I'm just really content with. You know, I don't feel like, I have no desire, you know, my Z7 has been with me since October 2018 and it's probably going to be longer, with me longer than my D700. Um, 